This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 1, in which we will be studying the graphs of exponential functions. Well, before we can graph them, we need to know what they are. An exponential function is a kind of function where the variable is in the exponent. Okay, you've done things like x squared, x to the third, x to the fifth, things of that sort, where x was the base and your exponent was a number. Now the tables are turned. You're going to have numbers at the base and variables up in the power. There's two main kinds. There's the growth function and the decay function. Their equations look a lot alike. They're both y equals something to the x, a b to the x kind of thing. Okay, f of x can be just as good as a y as far as graphing goes. So we're talking about a number to the x power. In general, a growth problem, the number that's your base is greater than 1. For decay, it looks a little trickier. 0 less than b less than 1. We're saying b is between 0 and 1. You can't have 0 or less. You can't go negative for your base. So all we're doing, all we're talking about here is fractions less than 1. That's your typical decay function. Okay. On 451, you're going to find one of their little tables, boxes down there that has key information about uh, domain and range, things of that sort, for growth functions. Then they have a similar piece of information, piece of data table for you on 453 for the decay functions. Okay, They mean the same, have the same information. It would be good information for you to have in your notes so that you can see how to work with it. And you have blank space on your note sheet, so you can take a few minutes there when you have a chance and uh, add that information in there. Make it a little easier to work some of these problems. So let's get down to the graphing. Okay. We have a basic exponential function, 4 to the x power. Now we can pick any values for x we want to. But when you see just an x in the power, what you're thinking you want is to center your numbers around 0. When it's just an x, you want to center on 0. And then pick two numbers below it and two numbers above it to be able to get yourself a good idea of what the graph looks like. We, again, we could pick anything we wanted to. But centering around 0 is a good idea. It makes the arithmetic simpler to work with. So now all we have to do is plug these numbers in for x. And I grab my trusty calculator. And I plugged in negative 2 and got an answer. Negative 1 got an answer. You, Depending on your calculator, you may have a decimal here. You may have uh, 0 0.0625, I believe it is. That's okay. It's the same value. I just worked with it as fractions because that's what my calculator gave me. So we have our values. Now all we have to do is plot the points and connect them together. Negative 2, 1 16th is a pretty small number, so I'm going to put it really close to the axis. Negative 1 gave me a fourth, still a smallish number. 0 gave me the value 1. 1 gave me the value 4. And 2 gave me the value 16 which I've already counted, and I know that's the right place for it. So then all I have to do is get a pen and use my little touchpad to connect these dots together. And of course I went right through dead center of every dot, perfectly smooth graph, your mileage may vary. 
Okay, things to notice toward one side or the other, the graph is going to take off. It's going to go way high or way low. It could be upside down and going downhill, but it's going to get really out of hand in a hurry. The other side is going to be relatively flat. Okay. Just something to be aware of. That's the base idea, is you're going to get something that looks like this. Okay. The higher this value is, this B value 4 in this case, a higher value makes the graph steeper. A lower value makes it flatter. Okay. Let's try another one on. Now hopefully you're going to notice there's a little something different going on this time. We have an x plus 3 instead of just an x. Okay. When we don't have just an x up here, I don't want to just pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I want to center on whatever makes my exponent equal 0. What value would make this exponent equal to 0? Negative 3. So I'm going to center on negative 3. So negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, just to get it centered together. Put these into my trusty calculator. And I have confidence in you that you can do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I'm just going to start plotting points. Negative 4 and 3 fourths, somewhere in there. Negative 4 gave me negative 4 and a half, somewhere in there. Notice how precise I'm being. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 1. Go to the pen feature. And connect them together again with a smooth-ish curve. Notice again, one side takes off. The other side is flat, and where is it flat? It's flat along negative 5, which they kind of gave us a tip off to right there. Okay. Let's graph one more. Okay, we have a few different features going on here. We have a negative 2. That's going to turn our graph upside down. We have a two-fifths, which is less than one. So we would be thinking decay going downhill, but then this negative is going to turn it upside down, so it's going to go uphill again. And then we have a different not x here. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where to center our values. What makes our exponent 0? 4. So 4 is my center point. 2 above it, 5 and 6. 2 below it, 3 and 2. And then plug in these values and using your trusty calculator, which I have all the confidence that you can do gives me these beautiful answers. Okay, again, you may have gotten decimals instead of fractions, but that's okay. 7, 8, 9, 10, and a half. So I'm going to plot my points. 3, negative 3. 4, 0. 5 gave me 1 and 1 fifth. 6 gave me 1 and 17 twenty fifths. I'm going to measure very precisely and put it there. Okay. 
Now, just from looking at the dots, we can see this isn't the same exact shape. We can see it flattens this way, along too, by the way, and takes off in the negative direction. See, there's the flattening. And it's going downhill. Downhill because of the negative on this. That's what turned it upside down. And the flattening on the right is because it was a decay function. So a graph, something along those lines. Now one thing that we can do with these functions is if we're looking at growth or decay that has a constant percentage change over specific periods of time, you know, something like 2% per week or 5% per year, something of that sort. Then we have different functions to work with. For growth and for decay, the functions look a lot alike. The difference is whether you're adding or subtracting. When things are growing, you're adding. When things are decaying, you subtract. The capital A stands for the final amount. The little a, in both cases, stands for the original. R is your percentage rate, and make sure you turn it into a decimal to use it. And T is the number of time periods that you're using. If they ask for the growth factor or the decay factor, what they're asking you for is this value 1 plus R or 1 minus R. And that's easy enough to find. So let's do a problem with this. According to research that I found, a cup of black tea contains 68 milligrams of caffeine. Now, how fast your body eliminates caffeine varies from person to person, but the average teenager can eliminate about 12.5% of the caffeine in their system every hour. So our job is to estimate the amount of caffeine that's still in your body two hours after you drink a cup of this black tea. And I went ahead and put the, the decay equation because we're eliminating, so we're getting smaller, the amount that we have. Okay. Where are we starting at? Our original value is 68 milligrams. Our R is 12.5%, and our T is 2 hours. So I'm going to plug those values in and then punch this into my calculator and it tells me that after two hours the average teenager would have just over 52 milligrams left in their, in their body. If they ask for the decay rate all you would do is this 1 minus 0 0.125 subtract that you would have 0.875 that would be your decay rate. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You have to be able to make graphs, but that's the easy part, and then applying it with the growth and decay equations. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in to ask, and we will see you in class.